We've already looked at glitches and technical mishaps that were embraced by developers to become their own fully-fledged features. Today, however, we are looking at the bugs that developers attempted to play off as part of the intended experience all along. You know, sort of like saying, I meant to do that after you accidentally run your friend over with your car. There are likely many examples of this type of thing, but the chances are that nobody actually knows about them. After all, if developers are claiming that these things were intentional, well, to slightly misquote Annie Lennox, who are we to disagree? Still, Still, once in a while, an intrepid whistleblower from the development team will come out and say, that bit we claimed on purpose, yeah, we were lying, soz. And it's a good thing they did or this video would be quite short. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video game bugs that developers pretended were intentional. Number 10. Lara Croft's Proportions Tomb Raider. We'll start with a fairly famous one. The early Tomb Raider games received acclaim for a variety of good reasons. They were fundamental to the foundation of early 3D gaming and Lara herself was a pioneering step forward for female protagonists, even if she was just a rich toff with a penchant for killing endangered creatures. That's an actual T-Rex, Lara! Stop shooting it in the face! There was, however, one feature that a lot of amorous teens and seedy news outlets clung on to. Two features, actually, which regularly graced magazine covers and which would likely have your eye out if you got too close. Lara's voluptuous form was supposedly down to a programming error, with the design model accidentally increased by 150% over what was intended. The team liked it and just left it as it was, because of course they did. This was the 90s after all, a decade which could have done with being bonked and sent to horny jail. Number 9. Wave Dashing – Super Smash Bros. Melee There is a manoeuvre in Super Smash Bros. Melee known as Wave Dashing, the act of air dodging on an angle into the ground, causing your character to slide along the surface. It's an advanced technique, but it isn't actually a proper move. Players were never intended to do it. Creator Masahiro Sakurai said that the particular exploit was spotted during development, but they never bothered to correct it because he didn't think it would have much impact on overall play. Oh, how wrong he was. The physics bug eventually became part of professional Super Smash Bros. Melee competition. Sakurai, however, didn't like it, seeing it as unnecessarily increasing the skill gap between players, so for the following release, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, he purposely limited the physics quirk, rendering it useless. The pros responded by quickly going back to Super Smash Bros. Melee and pretended Super Smash Bros. Brawl never existed. Come Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Sakurai reluctantly allowed the bug back in, canonising the problem he didn't bother to fix in the first place. It's all very confusing, and I never want to see the words Super Smash Bros. ever again. Thank you. Number 8. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Yep, Skyrim just just Skyrim in general, all of Skyrim. I'm sure you might be surprised to learn this, but as it happens, Bethesda games are often full of bugs. I know, I was shocked too. While you'll find them in any Bethesda game, some of their most revered and famous glitches can be found in Skyrim. Classic issues such as horse tilting, which catapults you across the map and getting hit by the giant's club, which also catapults you across the map. Let's just say the physics engine is questionable at best. The thing is, Bethesda seems to have an ideology of, if it doesn't harm anyone, don't bother fixing it. While they did patch the likes of chickens counting as crime witnesses, just about every other glitch remains intact through the game's various ports and re-releases. That's probably for the best. If they were to fix every problem found since the game's 2011 release, they'd probably still be working on it by the time of the heat death of the universe! Number 7. Escaping Slimes – Slime Rancher with its bright colours and endearing characters, Slime Rancher is an idyllic farming game akin to Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley. Or is it? When you look a bit closer, you realise that it's a capitalistic nightmare about forcefully capturing slimes so you can imprison them in small cages and farm them for your own monetary gain, proving once and for all that life is cruel and hope is ultimately meaningless. The nihilistic nature of Slime Rancher becomes even more evident when you realise that flying slimes will pick up their friends to rescue them from captivity, and that a group of slimes in an enclosure will pile on top of each other in order to escape the hands of the ruling class. I think I might be looking into this a bit too much. Designer Nick Popovich said in a talk, that neither bit of behaviour was intentional. He revealed that stacking was always an intended feature, as it was a reference to the slime stack in Dragon Quest, but the fact that slimes would pile themselves up was a happy quirk of the physics engine. This was also the case with rescuing. When a flying slime would get locked into a stack with a ground-based one, the flying one would lift the other and free it into the wild once again. It's all enough to make you cry a single slimy tear. Number 6. Sabin's Train Suplex 
Final Fantasy VI. One of Brock Lesnar's, sorry, uh, Sabin's blitzes in Final Fantasy VI is the suplex. It may be better known as one of MMA and pro wrestling's most famous moves, but surely the maneuver has had no more devastating an incarnation than Sabin's variation. Suplexing a train is a simply ridiculous feat of strength and must be the gaming equivalent of Bill Goldberg's jackhammer on The Giant during WCW Nitro on the 23rd of November 1998. Sorry, wrong wrong channel for that kind of thing. As it happens, the iconic moment was a mistake. It turns out that the move is supposed to have a weight limit, meaning that enemies above a certain size shouldn't be suplexable. The developers just forgot to set it for the Phantom Train boss fight, resulting in the ability to perform devastating wrestling moves on an actual train. Final Fantasy VII includes a variation of the move, this time with no weight limit in the game at all, which retroactively excuses Sabin's warping of the rules to his own universe. Aren't games just wonderful? Number 5. Requiring the Expansion Pack Donkey Kong 64 there's a very well-known story surrounding Donkey Kong 64 which has been both confirmed and denied by various people who worked on it. So rather than be boring and saying, oh, well this person definitely said it's wrong so it's definitely, definitely wrong, definitely, let's go with the fun side of the story because we're very cool people who are an absolute hoot. As the legend goes, Nintendo was bringing out an add-on for the Nintendo 64 that would increase the RAM from 4 megabytes to, <laughs> hang on, 8 megabytes! Apparently Rare found a glitch near the end of developing Donkey Kong 64 and for some reason plugging in the expansion pack avoided the glitch being triggered. The marketing pushed the expansion pack as being necessary to the game, even though all it did was avoid a glitch that Rare hadn't managed to fix themselves. And even with the now mandatory add-on, the game still topped the charts. Let's just put this success down to the DK rap, shall we? Come on, Cranky, take it to the fridge. Number 4. The Fog Silent Hill, Superman The New Adventures, and Spider-Man. A layer of fog was purposely built into many games of the fifth generation. This prevented the hardware from having to render objects at a significant distance, and it was a clever development trick to better optimise resources. Of course, it was executed poorly as often as it was executed well. Possibly the most famous example is Silent Hill, in which the dense fog adds to the eerie horror of the town and is part of the hallucinations. There, it feels like a very deliberate part of the experience, even if it sprung from a limitation faced by the development team. Then there's the likes of Superman The New Adventures, or Superman 64 if you want to get colloquial about this, where the fog feels far, oh so far from intentional. There, Kryptonite fog was apparently pumped into the game by Lex Luthor to limit Superman's powers and not because developer Titus was making a game that barely worked. Even Neversoft's Spider-Man had some in-game goons release a sinister fog into the city streets, forcing you to keep to the rooftops, meaning Neversoft could get away with building much less of the environment. Will this excuse make a comeback when developers start pushing the limits of the new PlayStation and Microsoft consoles? I haven't the foggiest, I'm sorry. Number 3. Enemies Speeding Up – Space Invaders for video game buffs, the increasingly speedy aliens of Space Invaders were likely the first thing that came to mind when you clicked this video. It's fair enough, really. You'd be hard-pressed to find someone who hasn't heard the backstory of the game which so cynically ripped off Space Raiders' crisps. The aliens speeding up as their numbers dwindled was not deliberately programmed into the game. It was actually a byproduct of technical limitations. Hardware at the time simply couldn't cope with the sheer power of Space Invaders. No, really, this was genuinely cutting edge in the late 70s. Series creator Tomohiro Nishikado noticed the issue during development. After an alien was destroyed, it freed up more processing power and allowed each frame to refresh the positions of the remaining aliens more quickly, making it seem like they were getting faster. Nishikado kept it in and accidentally invented the difficulty curve. But of course, it was all definitely absolutely unequivocally intentional, honest. A fun fact for you all, as it happens, the series creator never liked the name Space Invaders and wanted it to be called Space Monster. I'm guessing that's because Space Invaders sounded a bit too much like the Crisps, which is fair enough, really. Number 2. The Last Three Bosses – Ninja Gaiden Ninja Gaiden, or Ninja Gaiden if you want to just pronounce it however you like, I don't care, is an infamously difficult game. You could call it the Dark Souls of side-scrollers if it didn't predate Dark Souls by 22 years or if it were in any way similar to it, or even if the writer were feeling particularly lazy that day. So as the Dark Souls of side-scrollers, Ninja Gaiden slash Gaiden slash Gaiden had a particularly notorious ending sequence which saw you face off against three bosses in a row. If you were to fail against any of them, you'd be thrown back to the start of the entire stage. Bear in mind, these bosses are found 
found in Acts 6-4 and 6-5, meaning you are sent back to 6-1. And you'll be sent back often, as the bosses are brutal and getting to them is no picnic in itself. The thing is, it was never supposed to be this harsh. According to lead artist Masato Kato, a glitch caused you to get sent back further than initially expected, but rather than fix it, the developers pretended that that was their intention all along. Thank this single accident for breaking the sanity of so many gamers in 1988. Number 1. Rocket Jumping – Quake According to one of Quake's designers, Tim Willett, the beloved technique of rocket jumping was created by accident. As was the case with id Software games since Doom, those fairly loose physics engines they built would give way to all manner of exploits. A version of rocket jumping actually existed in Doom, but it was a less useful sideways variation. Call it a rocket mild shuffle if you will. Apparently, during testing of Quake, programmer John Cash was trapped in a corner and decided that if he was going out, he'd take everyone with him. He proceeded to fire a rocket straight down, which propelled him up and into safety. Having now discovered that this was possible, the developers just left it as is and just made sure you couldn't use it to escape the boundaries. As I'm sure you know, the technique was rediscovered and adopted post-launch and even became its own competitive tactic. So remember kids, if you're ever in a tricky situation, fire a rocket into your own feet. No, don't do that. We were lying about the Space Invaders Crisp thing too. Really, just don't trust us on any of this stuff, and please don't call the police. 